thank you for getting ready and being here today in the house of the Lord. We're thankful for 84 in Sunday school this morning. Thankful for those that were here with us. And uh, let's remind everyone, or invite someone to Sunday school and uh, bring a visitor with you. Amen. Next Sunday, we will not be having Sunday school. And I need to make a correction to my class. I told you the wrong time. Uh, next Sunday at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. Sister Justy said she was right. We argued her down and told her it was 10.30. But here we are, eating crow. It is 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, a uh, week from today, Christmas, Christmas morning. We will be right here uh, for a service, no Sunday school, and uh, we'll sing a few songs, and I will deliver uh, to you what the Lord has laid on my heart. We'll have a time of prayer, and then we'll go on about our festivities. But I understand that you have family obligations and you're unable to be here. But if you can, let's come and be in the house of the Lord on Christmas morning and uh, spend some time with the Lord. Like I say, we're not going to hold you very long, but we want you to be here in the house of the Lord with us on, on Sunday morning. Uh, uh, that is uh, next Sunday. Let's remember December, January the 8th will be the baby shower for uh, Brianna and Brent Dean. Uh, that'll be from 3 to 5 p.m. That'll be in the Family Life Center at the bottom of the hill. Uh, starting February the 5th for us, February the 5th through that Wednesday, that starting that Sunday morning, we will be start having revival with the Blythe family. And uh, I don't know if anybody knows them or, or has heard of them, heard them sing or preach, but uh, you can find them. That they're on YouTube. Their music is on YouTube, I know, and uh, you can feel free to go listen to them there. Uh, but they're out of Oklahoma. They've been friends of ours for some time, and uh, we've been after them for about two years now to come to the church, and uh, we've, they finally got it in their schedule to, to come, and uh, they're going to be with us that Sunday morning through that Wednesday night. So that'll be starting February the 5th. So remember that we're looking forward to revival in the new year. Amen. I believe that's all the announcements that we have for now. Amen. Let's invite the Spirit of the Lord in this place today. I want Him to come and dwell in our midst. I need Him today. How about you? Amen. I need Him today. Oh, I want Him to be in our midst. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this opportunity. Lord, we thank You for this privilege that we have to be in Your house. Lord, I ask You today, God, that You would work. Lord, that You would move in a mighty way. Lord, would You begin to touch hearts and begin to touch lives today. Lord, you see those that are gathered here. Lord, would you touch their heart, touch their life, minister to them today. The Lord, we're asking you, God, that you would sweep across this congregation. The Lord, side to side, front to back. Lord, would you examine, would you encourage? Lord, would you save, would you deliver? Lord, search our hearts today. Lord, and speak to us. Lord, speak through us today. Lord, we thank you for it. Let every word that is spoken, every song that is sung, let it all be anointed and let it be done for your glory. We thank you for it. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen and amen. All the twill and the will come help us out in the choir.
makes me happy. Amen. Talking about going home. Amen. Being able to lay eyes on our Savior. Amen. Should do us good. Should make us happy as a child of God. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, this morning. We got many needs, several needs this morning. Let's remember this morning, especially uh, Sister Tanya uh, Chapman. She was, she's going in the morning uh, for her third heart cath uh, since about the second week in October, I believe, in that in that time span. And uh, if, if they can't fix tomorrow uh, the, the issues that she's having or symptoms that she's having, she will be looking at an open heart surgery. And uh, so let's be praying for her that God would touch her body, open these arteries, these blockages. Uh, relieve these symptoms and just make her 100% whole. Amen. God is able to do that. Amen. So let's remember Sister Tanya today. Let's remember Brother Sam's brother. He had to have emergency surgery on that shoulder this weekend. Let's remember him that God would heal his body and touch him. Sister Lucy is at home today with the flu. Let's remember her that God would touch her body and uh, strengthen her. Amen. Let's remember Sister Wright. Continue to remember her and uh, pray for her. Uh, Sister Virginia as well, even though she has moved to Florida. Uh, let's still remember her. She's a part of our church family. And uh, let's remember her. Sister Kim Merritt's mother. Let's remember her today. Uh, she battles cancer. And uh, I'm, from my understanding, uh, her kidneys are having trouble functioning properly uh, this past week. So let's remember uh, her mother. Let's remember Sister Kim being uh, the primary caregiver there uh, for strength in her body and mind as well. Uh, so let's remember them today that God would heal uh, Sister Kim's mother. Amen. All the needs. I know there's many among us that are sick. Amen. Let's remember every one of them. Sister Tammy, in the coming days. Amen. As far as treatments go, let's remember her. That God would be with her and comfort her. Sister Riley got a good report. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, we give God all the glory. Praise for that. Amen. We're going to continue to believe for a 100% complete healing. And that body to be made completely whole. Amen. Church, is it God good? Amen. God's good. Amen. Brother Sam. Yes. Yes. Let's remember Brother Sanders. He's he's down to really where he can't can't drive much or or go much. And uh, if you know Brother Sanderson, uh, that's that's a very uh, aggravating to him. He likes to get out and go and drive. So let's remember him today that God will be with him and comfort him there where he is. Amen. How many have unspoken needs today? Amen. God knows these needs. Amen. How many have lost loved ones you want to see saved? God save them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this privilege, this opportunity, Lord, that we have to come before you and bring our needs, bring our petitions. Lord, we ask you today, God, that you would work, that you would move, Lord, in each and every situation. Lord, would you touch Sister Tanya? Would you open these arteries, Lord? Clear these blockages. Lord, bring strength back to this heart. Lord, God, we know you're able. Lord, would you touch Brother Sam's brother? Go to where he is. Lord, would you heal his body? Lord, allow his shoulder to mend and, and mend properly. Lord, would you touch Sister Lucy? Go to her home, Lord, where she's battling the flu. Touch her body. Lord, heal her right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, would you move for Sister Wright? God, would you touch her? Lord, visit her where she is. Sister Virginia, Brother Sanderson, Lord, go to them. Touch their bodies, touch their minds, touch their hearts, their soul, their spirit. Oh, God, we know, Lord, that you are able. And, Lord, we're asking you today, God, that you would work, Lord, that you would move. Oh, God, Brother Henry's brother-in-law, Lord, that is battling cancer. Lord, would you heal him today? God, would you touch his body? Lord, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Oh, God, would you heal him? Lord, we know that you're able. And, Lord, we're believing you today, God, to touch, Lord, and to work on his behalf. Oh, God, we ask, Lord, that you'd move for every unspoken need. You know what they are. Go to them. Move in each and every situation. God, would you save our lost loved ones? Lord, would you heal them, save their soul? Bring them to an altar, to a place of repentance.
repentance this day. Lord, we know that you're able. Lord, and we're trusting and believing you for it. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Ushers, if you will, come on, let's receive the tithe and offering. Amen. Thank you for being faithful and giving unto the Lord. Amen. Being faithful this year, in obedience to God's word, and giving unto his kingdom. Amen. I know he appreciates it. Amen. And so does the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's pray to, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, bless this offering. Bless those that have to give and those that have not. Take what is given. Lord, you know the need. Multiply to meet the need. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship with them this morning as they sing.
Amen. Thank you to all those that helped our Christmas dinner be such a success last week. And uh, I thought our children did a wonderful job in their program. And uh, we're just so proud of them. And uh, I know our children's church workers are in there. But I thank them for their hard work and uh, their effort in getting them together and ready for their program. And uh, like those that stayed, we, I thought our Christmas dinner was a wonderful time, wonderful crowd. And thank you for being here and being a part of it. Luke chapter number one this morning. The book of Luke chapter number one today. Amen. Hallelujah. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. All right. I was just checking. Amen. Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. We're going to start in verse number 26. Verse number 26. Amen. Very familiar reading this time of year. Uh, has to be expected. But I feel the Lord has laid something on my heart today for us uh, out, of the, out of this passage of Scripture. Amen. In the sixth month, uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord, and may the Lord anoint his word today. Amen. I don't know of anyone uh, this morning here or anywhere else that enjoys having your plans interrupted. Uh, I, I don't know of that person that just looks forward to that time that you've taken the time to plan out your day, your month, your year, uh, an event, and then for there to be an, a totally uh, unexpected interruption come into those plans that you just uh, uh, get great joy out of that. No, we, we really don't, don't know anybody like that because when we have a plan, we want it to go that way. There's very few people uh, that fly by the, seat, by the seat of their pants, so to speak, and just uh, go here and there and don't have a plan. Most of us have a plan, maybe more detailed uh, than others, but there's probably a good portion of you that know what you will be doing tomorrow. You already have it planned out. You know where you'll be. You know what you got lined up. You know how things will, will play out. Uh, there, you know where you're going to be spending Christmas next uh, next weekend. You, you have a plan. You've already talked and to loved ones. Uh, some of you ladies may know what you're cooking and, and what you're bringing to, to a get together. You know how many is going to be at your house or, or, or wherever you're going to be. And, and you have a plan. You're, you're working it out. You, you have the plan. That, that, that's how we are. And that's uh, uh, the, 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 the way our minds are set up. 
And uh, I will say this, that interruptions to the to plans can be very frustrating at times. Can anybody say amen? Amen. They can be very frustrating at times. I've taken my time to make this plan. I've taken my time to, to organize and set everything in order. And man, here is just a major interruption to my plan. If my plans get interrupted, it better be worth it. Amen. If my plans get interrupted, it better be worth it. I, I want it to be worth my while. Now, I want you to understand, nobody get offended with me. In my business or, or my job, I guess you could say, uh, my plans get interrupted often. And that is okay. I plan, I, I know that. I know that going in. We talk about that as a family, that there are times that I may need to go do this or that. And that is just the, the, the nature of it, and I understand that. But Mary has had the ultimate interruption to all of her plans. You see, Joseph has romantically, uh, uh, a few months back, knelt down on one knee, and uh, he had the candles and the rose petals, and I mean, it was just a, a, a social media moment uh, to, be, to be had. I mean, pictures and, and videos to be taken, and Joseph just spills out to Mary all his love and affection that he has for her. The moment that I laid eyes on you, Mary, you were the most beautiful woman I've ever uh, met in my life. And I knew instantly that I wanted to marry you. Now, this isn't recorded. I'm using my imagination, okay? And uh, then my heart just went pitter-patter and pitter-patter and pitter -patter. And I want you to be my wife. I, I want you to marry me. And I want us to ride off into the sunset. And I want us to live happily ever after. Man, as, as Joseph is spilling his heart out to Mary, I mean, her, her heart starting to race now. Oh, the, the, the man of my dreams, my, my Prince Charming is here. And here, oh, yeah, before he even got done, yes, I'll marry you. And all oh, the excitement that ensued from that moment and the planning and where are we going to have the wedding and who all is going to be there, what are we going to eat and, and so on and so forth. Like I say, I don't know how it all went. I'm using my imagination. But up to this day, Mary has been planning a wedding. She has been planning the rest of her life with the man of her dreams. We are going to get married. We're going to do it right. We're going to live holy. We're not going to uh, break this vow and this covenant that we have made. I'm going to keep myself pure until the day of our wedding. And, and I, I am, we're so excited. They have agreed together. And oh, I can't wait for this day to, to, to be married to the man of my dreams and live happily ever after. No doubt Mary and Joseph have already looked at a, at a place or a piece of property to buy. Maybe Joseph's father has a, a piece of property that he is going to sell them or give them a place that maybe they can build a home or put a trailer on. Amen. Well, I'm talking about it in today, today's terms. They're just happy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a palace. It, it doesn't have to be the finest home on the block or, or on the street. They are just excited to, to be married and to have a place to live. No doubt they've talked and, and they've said, well, we don't want to be like a, a so-and-so. You know, they got married and, and they had a kid within the first year. We want to get to know each other. Let's go on a few vacations and, and let's, uh, let's wait at least three years before we have a child. Let's just enjoy each other. Oh, man. I, I know Sister Jean and I have those talks and that plan. We, when we're getting married young, let's enjoy each other for a little while. Little did we know we wouldn't even have hard enough money to get back and forth to work, much less go on vacation. Amen. But we had fun regardless. Amen. And along came Addison and the world went and 
eternal woman. Hey, I'm, I'm joking, amen. Uh, but but we, we've talked to oh, let's let's do this. Let's get to know each other. I lived in Virginia. She lived in Georgia, so we knew each other a little bit, but not that that much. I, I knew she was crazy, but I didn't know how, how how much she was crazy. I didn't know how far how deep it went. Amen. She knew I was hard-headed, but uh, she didn't realize how hard-headed and stubborn I was. Amen. She she had just seen and witnessed a little bit. But but Mary and Joseph there, they, they had made up in their mind. Let's have a plan. Let's oh and now everything is in order. And Mary is in bed one night dreaming about her wedding and thinking about the future and thinking about how everything is going to play out and, and how everything is going to to be and out of nowhere the, the room lights up in a light that, that she has never seen before there is a presence that settles down into her room and Mary is frightened she is scared to death and it is the angel of the Lord has settled down in her Gabriel is there in her room and, and he is letting her know today Mary you have found favor in the eyes of God. Oh my, we have now have an interruption to Mary's plans. I have everything planned out. And Gabriel begins to speak to her and begins to talk to her and tell her everything as to how it was going to be. Mary, you have found favor in the eyes of God. You are highly favored among women and God has looked upon you and he wants you to be the carrier he wants you to be the mother the one that will carry his son Jesus man you gotta understand Mary has heard that this time would come Mary has heard her whole life that, that the savior that the messiah would be born of a virgin but never in a million years did she think it would be her never in a million years did she think she would be the one that will carry the Messiah. But now the moment is here. The time is here. And the Gabriel is telling her this is exactly what is going to happen. Great fear. Great fear has now gripped her heart. You and I would think at this moment and we would say, oh, what an awesome, what a powerful moment this must have been. Oh, but for her, it was great fear because the angel even said, Mary, fear not. Fear not. Calm down. Everything is okay. And the angel tells her how all of this is going to happen. She's reasoning with the angel Gabriel. I don't know a man. I, I've never known a man. But us adults, we know what that means. I've never known a man. I, I don't have any plans on knowing one until I am married. And I, 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 don't, I don't understand how all of this is, is going to take place. Well, Mary, let me understand. Let me explain something to you. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and he will bring life into your womb and you will carry the Messiah. You're going to call his name Jesus. Oh, and he is going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All kingdoms and all nations will bow at his feet. He is going to be something oh, that you've never seen and never witnessed before. He will be the Savior of the world. Oh my, the angel tells Mary all of this. The angel leaves. And I can't, I can't even imagine the presence that Mary must have felt. The awe struck that Mary must have felt by being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The angel told Mary some very encouraging words as he is laying Brother David this charge on her, laying this responsibility on her shoulders and the visitation that has come. The angel has looked at Mary and he has given her some very encouraging words. Amen. The angel has looked at her and he has said, Mary, you are favored. Hallelujah. You are favored. Oh my. He looked at her and he said, you are blessed. God has blessed you. Amen. Oh, and he gave her another promise. He said, God will be with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I'll have a little church by myself. You're favored, Mary. You're blessed. And God will be with you. You are not going to 
walk down this road alone. You're not going to walk on this journey alone. I have visited you and you are favored. Hallelujah. Oh my. This lets me know oh, that God looks at me different than what I look at myself. Amen. God looks at me different in the way I look at myself. You see, Mary didn't come from the highest class of society. She didn't have a lot of money. Her mom and daddy weren't the most well-known in town. Oh, but the angel looked at her and said, Mary, you have found favor in the eyes of God. Woo! Hallelujah. You have found favor in the eyes of God. You will be blessed by the hand of God. And you will be comforted by the presence of God from this day forward. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? One day that he looked upon you and he said, you are favored. You're blessed. And I will be with you. Aren't you glad that he looks upon you in a different way than what we look at ourselves? Hallelujah. I want you to know today that you're favored. You're blessed. And God is with you. Amen. Brother Ryan, have you turned into one of those prosperity preachers? No. I'm letting you know what God wants you to know today. Your favor. Hallelujah. Your favor in the eyes of God. Your favor in the eyes of God. He looks upon you and you have found favor in his eyes. Hallelujah. He wants you to know that the blessings from above rest upon you. And he wants you to know that he is today. He wants you to know that he's walking with you today. He wants you to know that he is right by your side. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Maybe in a different sense and in a different way. But I'm glad the Lord came to me like he came to me. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm glad that the Lord looked upon me. I'm going to go on in just a moment. But I'm glad that the Lord looked upon me. Oh, he looked upon Mary. I'm glad that the moment I knelt in an old fashioned altar, all oh, that I hear the Lord say, You are favored, my son. I will be with you, my son, and I will bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the feeling of excitement that Mary had in this moment? She has heard from the Lord, I am favored. She has heard from the Lord that I am favored and that I oh, have found favor in the eyes of God. I, I have found favor in the eyes of God. God is going to bless me and God is with me. Oh, can you imagine the excitement? No doubt. She jumped up. She put her clothes on. She got herself ready. Or maybe she waited to daylight. I, I don't know. But, but I bet she didn't sleep awake the rest of the night. I bet she just waited with anxiousness and anticipation. Oh, I've got to go tell somebody about what happened. I've got to tell somebody about my experience. Oh, but the reality was Mary could not stay in that moment forever. Mary could not stay in that moment forever. Mary could not live in, in that moment of the initial visitation of God in her life forever. She had to go out into the real world. Amen. Stay with me for just a moment. I, I'm not going to bear your patience much longer. She had to go out into the real world. She, she had to go out and face everybody in the real world. Amen. Oh, my Mary leaving her home with such excitement and such anticipation as to what has happened. And the first one she goes to is she goes to Joseph and begins to explain to, to him everything that has happened and how it has all taken place. I can see Mary as she's telling Joseph how everything has happened. She's giddy. She's excited. She's just overjoyed. Remember what the Old Testament scroll said. Remember what we heard as children. What Isaiah wrote in, in, the, in the Old Testament scrolls. Remember how it was read to us as we were children. And in children that the Messiah was coming. Remember how it was said that he would be born of a virgin. Joseph, the angel came to me tonight and said that I am going to go. Oh, can't you see how bubbly and how excited she is? Oh, oh she can't hardly stand still. He's calm down, Mary. I can't, I can't understand you. I, I, 
I don't know what you're saying. And she's doing her best to try to formulate a sentence and get everything out. And she finally helps him understand that I am with child. I'm a child. I'm carrying the, the Messiah. Bless sure. You, Lord. Bless sure you are. Mary feels the reality. Feels the reality of being faithful. Hallelujah. Mary, in her first conversation with Joseph, feels the reality of being faithful. Amen. We've got to understand this morning uh, that being favored does not mean the absence of problems. Help me, somebody. Being favored does not mean the absence of problems, but being favored means the guaranteed presence of God. Hallelujah. Being favored does not mean the absence of problems. Hallelujah. Being favored does not mean the absence oh, of depression, the absence of, of, of divorce, the absence of sickness, the absence of, of children wandering away, the absence of, of job tri tribulations and being laid off or fired from your job. No, oh, no. Being favored doesn't mean any of that. Oh, but being favored means that God will be with me through. Explaining everything to Joseph and doubt falls over Joseph's face. And Joseph does not believe and does not understand what Mary is saying. Mary leaves and time goes on. We know the angel comes again to Joseph and explains everything to him. And he now understands and he now does believe. Oh my, but we understand that as Mary has is, is starting to grow, she's starting to show now that she is with child, that there is a, a sect of society, there's a group of society that does not believe that Mary is carrying the Messiah. Sure, this girl that claimed to be pure, that claimed to be holy, now she said she has seen an angel and she is now pregnant because of this. Oh, hogwash. There's no way that can be true. Oh, don't be critical of them. Some of you would be the same way. Amen. We, we would say the same thing. That's not even possible. How could that be? Oh, my. Just a few moments ago, Mary was favored. Just a few moments ago, life could not have gotten any better for Mary. But now she is feeling the weight of being favored. Oh, she's feeling the pressure of being favored. I want some of you to think back oh, to when you knelt in an altar, to when you made up your mind to serve the Lord with your whole heart. Oh, wasn't it a joyous time? Well, wasn't it a happy time? Oh, but as you look around now, as you look, oh, there's been some pressure. There's been some disappointment. There's been some discouraging times all from being favored. Hallelujah. I didn't know that being favored would feel like this. I didn't know that being favored would lead to the feeling of rejection. I didn't know that being favored would lead to the feeling of isolation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, I'm talking to somebody this morning. I didn't know that being favored, I would feel so alone. I didn't know that being favored that I would look around and all my friends would be gone. Have your way, Holy Ghost. I didn't know that being favored, I, I didn't know that when I committed to serve the Lord that I would face such criticism and such ridicule from those that were so close and so near and dear to my heart. Hallelujah. I didn't know that when I made the choice to serve the Lord and I heard that I was favored and that I would be blessed and that I would never be alone. I didn't know that being favored would feel like this. You see, Mary now, oh, they're having to make a journey and they're having to go home to pay taxes and we've got to go all the way to Bethlehem. Oh, it's now just for Mary and Joseph. Oh, my. It's now just for them, too. There's not a large following that is believing. There's not a great group of people that believe that Mary has heard from the Lord. Oh, but it does not matter. Mary is carrying a promise. Mary is carrying the promise that God told her. I want you to understand. I know that being favored isn't always fun. Being favored isn't always easy. But hold on. God is doing something in you. 
me to be laughed at. Mary could have said, I didn't know that being favored was going to make me lose some of my closest friends. I didn't know that being favored was, was going to lead me to the place to where my fiance doubted me and thought that I was lying and thought that I had cheated on him and been with somebody else. Oh my, I didn't know that being favored would bring me to here. Oh, Brother Ryan, I didn't know that being favored would bring such sickness in to my family and into my home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't know that being favored was going to bring such pain and such turmoil to my marriage. I, I didn't know that being favored, I didn't know that committing my heart to God would lead me to where I am now. I would ask you this morning, what does being favored look like to you? We can all pass the mic around today. And we can say that this Christian walk has not been a bed of roses. Amen. Can the saints of God say amen? amen? Amen. If you're lost this morning, don't let that deter you. Amen. Hallelujah. This Christian walk has not always been a bed of roses. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord. This way that I've been on has not always been easy. Hallelujah. This road that I'm walking down, I have felt projection. Hallelujah. Oh my. Hallelujah. This road that I'm walking down, I have felt isolated and all alone at times. Oh, on this Christian walk and in my journey to live pleasing unto the Lord, I have been criticized and made fun of and I have been laughed at. Hallelujah. Oh my. I that being favored was going to look like this. I, I didn't realize that when I heard, oh, when I accepted the call into the ministry that everything would come with it like it has. I didn't know it would all play out like it is. Oh, but let me tell you, I can stand here today and I can tell you that I'm favored, but I can also tell you that I am blessed. Hallelujah. I can also tell you that I'm blessed and I can tell you that God has never left. What does being favored look like to you? What does being favored look like to your life? Oh, what does it look like to your body? What does it look like to your situation? What does it look like to your home? Oh, my Mary, will you hold on just a little while longer? We are almost to Bethlehem. Hallelujah. We are almost to Bethlehem. Oh, Mary had gone through all the ridicule. She had gone through all the pain and all of the suffering. Oh, but on the back of that donkey, on the back of that donkey that Joseph was leading, she began to feel something that she hadn't felt before. Joseph, we got to hurry. I'm starting to hurt. Joseph, we got to hurry. Now is the time. It's the time. Hallelujah. It's right now. Hallelujah. Oh, the promise was on the way. Amen. Hallelujah. The promise was on the way. Do you have any room here? No, I don't have any room. More rejection. Hallelujah. Uh, do you have an open spot here? No, we don't have any open spot. More rejection. Uh, oh, this young couple, here they are. They've got themselves in a bind and looking for somewhere to have this baby. We can make fun of it and be ridiculed. But Mary is telling Joseph everything is going to be all right. Just find me somewhere where we can have a little promise. Find me somewhere where we can be alone for a little while because the promise is on the way. Hallelujah. The promise is on the way. I know that when you signed up, you didn't know it would end up like this, but hold on. The promise is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because you have faced rejection does not mean you're no longer anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because, come on, Sister Tammy, just because you have faced rejection does not mean you're no longer anointed. Hallelujah. Just because you have had to walk through a few valleys does not mean you're no longer called. Hallelujah. Just because you've had to come through some hard times does not mean that God is done with you. Oh, I know that maybe from the outside looking in, being favored, may, may be seem like it came with a few more frills than what it does. Oh, oh no. Being favored.
favor, come with some pressure, come with some hard times, come with some pain. But I promise you, God will never leave you. Stand with us all over the house. Hallelujah. This walk, this way, is not the easiest thing that I've ever done. Committing myself to the Lord, dedicating my heart and my life to the Lord, is not the easiest thing that I've ever done. I want you to understand something today. I'm human just like you are. I'm a normal man, just like every one of you men in this place today. There's nothing special about me. Nothing. There's nothing special about your Sunday school teacher. They're human just like you are. They're favored just like you are. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about Sister Tammy. God has given her a talent, but she's a, she's a woman just like the rest of you ladies. Sister Jennifer, I know some of you see Sister Jennifer work in the altars. I admire her and how God uses her. I pray God used me that way in the altars. There's nothing special about her, but it's someone that God has put favor on. God has blessed, and God has never left. There's nothing special about me, but there's one thing that I've done that everybody can do, and many have, just totally surrender to the Lord. Yeah. Brother Bruce, with that comes the favor of the Lord. Many of you have felt that. Many of you have stood before classrooms of, of teenagers, children, adults, and taught and felt the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. And many of you can say today, many of you stood on the stage and sung songs and felt the anointing and felt the favor of God work through you. But today I feel that there are some that along with the favor has come some other things, has come some criticism, come some isolation, come some ridicule, hallelujah, come some rejection. You're still favored. You're still favored in the eyes of God. The blessings of God still rest upon you. Hallelujah. And God is still walking with you today. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hold on. Nine months. Nine months you're going to be holding that promise. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. In just a few days, Mary, you're going to be holding that promise. I know that being favored has seemingly drove you out. I know that being favored and being called and being anointed has seemingly pushed you away. But hold on, hallelujah. Oh, don't you feel the pains? Don't you feel, oh, that the promise is on the way? Don't you feel that in just a few moments I'm going to be sitting back? Let them say what they will because I'm rocking my baby. I have a promise. I see the fruit of it all. I have the promise that God told me he would do in my life. These altars are open to you today. You may be favored, but you may be tired. You may be weary along the journey. These altars are open today. Hold on. Now is not the time, Mary, to throw in the towel and say, I'm done. Hallelujah. Now is not the time. Come on. Hallelujah. To say, I'm done. I, I've gone as far as I can go. Now is not the time, Mary, to say, I need a break. Or, uh, just give me a little bit of time off. No, hold on, Mary. Hold on. Hold on. Hallelujah. I know your favor. I know there's a lot that comes with it. I know there's some pressure. I know that there's a lot oh, of things that you didn't realize it would end up just like this. But hold on. The promise is on the way. Hallelujah. The promise will be here. The promise will show up. Hallelujah. The promise. God will not lie. God will not go back on His word. God will not go back on what He said. If He told you He'd never leave you, then that means he will never leave you. If he told you, you would be blessed. But that means the blessings of the Lord are upon you. If he told you that you are favored, that means that his presence is forever with you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, God's good to His church. Hallelujah. Thankful for His Spirit. Amen. Brother Parker wanted us to remember Rady McLean. It's a bit called hospice in on him. And uh, let's remember, let's remember him today. May God will work and move, touch his body. Every one of these needs that we prayed for this morning, God knows them. Amen. He's able to touch. Do you believe that today? write his name down as well. I meant to mention him this morning. Let's remember Keith Smith that God will touch his body as well. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. Stand with us. Amen. Let's remember tonight at 6 o'clock we'll be back right here ready to see what God will do. Amen. Come be in church with us. Don't stay home. Amen. Come be in church with us tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place today. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that may have felt so rich and so pure in the sanctuary today. God, we ask you, Lord, that you would touch, Lord, that you would move and work for each and every one of these needs. Lord, would you help us to, as we go our separate ways, Lord, to understand, Lord, that we may feel the pressure of being favored, Lord, but you're right there beside us. Lord, you're never going to leave us nor forsake us. Lord, but you're going to walk with us all the way. Lord, we thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.